a wake-up call. That's what many are calling the Chinese spy balloon episode. The U.S. has now briefed 40 nations on its findings from the device. China maintains the balloon was a civilian aircraft that drifted off course while inspecting the weather. While the Pentagon says it was 100 percent not a civilian weather balloon and in fact had surveillance capabilities. Following the intel briefing with other nations, are we seeing a new allied force forming? And have China's global relations changed? What do you think? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The United States shared information with 40 nations about the Chinese spy balloon shot down on Saturday. The balloon drifted across Canada and the continental U.S. before it was shot down by a U.S. fighter jet. In an unusual move, America's top diplomat and the head of the world's biggest military alliance appeared together at a press conference, calling on countries to stay alert. Here's the latest. Who's responsible for that? <laughs> um, China is. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Wednesday that the United States shared information it obtained about China's spy balloon with dozens of countries around the world. Information the U.S. says demonstrates that it was not a weather balloon, as Beijing has claimed, but an airship that was used for espionage. We are getting more information uh, almost by the hour as we continue to work uh, to salvage the balloon. We're learning uh, from that. Uh, and as well, uh, we're learning from um, uh, what uh, we saw and picked up as the balloon traversed uh, the, uh, the United States. The U.S. held the briefings in Washington and Beijing earlier this week about the balloon it shot down off the coast of South Carolina over the weekend and presented its findings to nearly 150 foreign diplomats across 40 nations. Blinken, who postponed a visit to China because of the incident, said Chinese spy balloons have flown over several other countries, too. The United States was not the only target of this broader program, which has violated the sovereignty of countries across five continents. At the news conference with Blinken was NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, who said the incident confirmed a pattern of behavior exhibited by China. So we just have to be vigilant. We need to be aware of uh, the constant risk of uh, Chinese intelligence and uh, uh, then step up what we do to protect uh, ourselves. The Pentagon confirmed on Wednesday that four previous Chinese spy balloons flew over the U.S., but spokesman Brigadier General Patrick Ryder would not elaborate. They over what you would call sensitive sites? Again, I'm not going to... Uh, they were over sites that would be of interest to the Chinese, but I'm not going to go into the specifics, David. Ryder said U.S. Navy ships were continuing to recover the remnants of the Chinese spy balloon, which one U.S. official said was 200 feet tall with a payload underneath that weighed a couple thousand pounds. Following the downing of the Chinese surveillance balloon over the U.S., a new focus has emerged in Washington, zooming in on the capabilities and threats posed by the craft. Former U.S. Marine Captain Paul Crespo says Beijing could send high-altitude balloons over the U.S., and they could carry dangerous payloads, like small nuclear electromagnetic poles or EMP devices. Think Tank expert Frank Gaffney explains. If it is detonated actually a bit higher altitude than this balloon is at at the moment, but it can presumably take a nuclear weapon if it has one aboard to that altitude, it could generate what's known as an electromagnetic pulse, which the Chinese well understand could devastate the electric grid of our country. Crespo says that if power and communications were to get cut across the U.S., it would wreck, quote, widespread havoc for a year or more without firing a shot on the ground. Retired Army Colonel John Mills highlights other hidden hazards. But it also begs the question, could these be used as actually offensive uh, delivery of nuclear warheads, of hypersonic warheads, of chemical biological agents, of an EMP device? 
uh, the the options are limitless and just limited by the imagination. EMPs are bursts of electromagnetic energy that disrupt communications and damage electronic equipment. An EMP can be created by nuclear missiles, radio frequency weapons, and natural phenomena like geomagnetic storms. As experts fear, the Chinese spy balloon could have been used for prepping an EMP attack on U.S. nuclear facilities. The question now is, is China's spy balloon benign? I don't think it's uh, a coincidence that uh, they were over the three, essentially the three existing missile wings. The Chinese were clearly conducting surveillance. They were exploiting gaps and seams in our, uh, in our, air, uh, our, our air surveillance, our air picture. This was a spy operation. The balloon traveled over some of America's most sensitive military sites, vital to nuclear capabilities. These sites include Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, which oversees 150 nuclear-capable intercontinental ballistic missile silos. Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, home to the U.S. Strategic Command, and White Man Air Force Base in Missouri, which operates the Air Force's B-2 bomber. With reports of balloons serving roles in Beijing's warfare, let's take a closer look at a previous test done by China in 2018. Footage displays a similar high-altitude balloon, but with three hypersonic missiles dropped as part of testing. Chinese state broadcaster CCTV reported on the weapons test in 2018, showing the balloon lifting three hypersonic glide vehicles, or HGVs, from the ground. HGVs are generally launched by rockets. Once in orbit, they can fly through the atmosphere themselves. According to Chinese media reports, the balloon dropped HGVs or part of an effort to test the weapon's freefall process and develop precision hypersonic warheads. Joint drills from the U.S., Australia and the U.K. operating on U.S. soil. The exercises focused on countering the Chinese communist regime. The three-week drills began on Wednesday and simulate high-end combat operations against Chinese fighter jets and air defenses. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg reports. We think that if we're ready for China, we're ready for anybody. The joint air drills over the Nevada desert and beyond are meant to prepare fighter pilots for the challenges they would face in a conflict with China. We have two airborne uh, aggressor squadrons called the 64th and 65th aggressor squadrons. They fly the F-16s and the F-35s, and they replicate uh, all of the Chinese fighters through their 4th gen and their 5th gen uh, adversary aircraft. The training addresses the far distances the U.S., Australia, and the U.K. would have to negotiate in order to operate across the Pacific. The Pentagon has voiced growing concern in recent years over pressure from Beijing on self-ruled Taiwan. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, sees the island as a breakaway province. The U.S. government has identified China as its military's top strategic priority. That's despite it devoting billions of dollars to support Ukraine against Russia. CIA Director William Burns cautioned last week that the United States knew as a matter of intelligence that CCP leader Xi Jinping had ordered his military to be ready to conduct an invasion of self-governed Taiwan by 2027. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. Australia is announcing plans to remove Chinese-made cameras used in its Defense Department offices. Officials cited national security concerns for the decision. Here's what Australia's Defense Minister had to say about it. We're doing an assessment of, of all uh, the um, technology for, for surveillance within the defence uh, estate um, and where those um, particular cameras are found, they're going to be removed. The move follows Britain's decision in November to stop installing Chinese linked surveillance cameras at sensitive buildings. Some U.S. states have also banned vendors and products from several Chinese technology companies. The cameras in Australia were made by Hikvision and Dahua, both CCP partly owned firms. Both companies are on the U.S. government blacklist for aiding the ongoing genocide and repression of Uyghurs in the Xinjiang region. Well, the concern is that these are Chinese manufactured cameras and there's data being collected which is going back to the Chinese state. According to an audit, there are over 900 Chinese-made cameras in 250 buildings. These include the Departments of Defense, Foreign Affairs, and Finance. Under Chinese law, all companies in China must comply if regime authorities ask them to hand in data. 
Another outburst of public discontent in Wuhan, this time from seniors opposing steep cuts to their health care coverage. Despite rainy weather, tens of thousands of retirees demonstrated outside Wuhan City Hall. Video clips showed protesters clustered around the government building, holding umbrellas, while police formed a line to prevent them from entering. Authorities in Wuhan introduced a new health care policy this month. Under it, medical subsidies for retirees fell from 260 yuan to 83 yuan per month. The amount is equivalent to about $12, less than one-third of the original. The slash came amid the nation's widespread COVID-19 outbreak and soaring health care costs that many retirees struggle to afford. One citizen said the move affects nearly two million people. Retired seniors usually take drugs to cope with minor illnesses. The original 260 yuan subsidy was barely enough to cover this cost. Now the 80 yuan isn't enough to buy a single medicine. Why authorities are pushing the change? After nearly three years of massive testing and zero COVID, local governments are running out of money. That's why they came out with this so-called health care reform. According to Radio Free Asia, the protesters plan to hold another rally next Wednesday if officials don't respond before then. An eyewitness report is shedding light on COVID-19 deaths in rural China and how many of them are going unnoticed. A Shandong native shared what he learned while in his hometown for the Lunar New Year holiday. He said more than 50 people died in his village last year, while a dozen others passed away around the Lunar New Year. That translates into a stunning average of almost one death per week. Ages of the deceased range from 50 years old to 80 or 90. The source also noted another point. Most young people from the village travel to larger cities for work, meaning many are unaware of the situation at home. He gave another example. A few years ago, an elderly man died of COVID-19, but authorities require the news of his death to be kept quiet. His funeral was held in secret. His friends and relatives were not informed. Meanwhile, in a town in China's northern Jilin province, a woman revealed that during the outbreak, a local hospital saw one or two deaths per day. But even nearby residents were unaware how serious the situation was. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. The Chinese spy balloon still demanding public attention. TV footage from China reveals a new function of Chinese military balloons. But that's not all. We spoke to two experts to find out more about that and what Beijing could take away from Washington's reaction. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow.